You're watching Stimulating Minds on ABC 27, presented by Penn State Milton S. Hershey Medical Center. Now, Parkinson's patients also benefit from deep brain stimulation. Right now, you're going to meet a Cumberland County man who lived with Parkinson's for more than 10 years. 73-year-old Russ Minnick teaches his grandson, 6-year-old Josh, how to throw a baseball. Hey, I'm slow first. Josh winds up. Here's the pitch. Perfect, perfect, perfect. <sighs> Russ has big dreams for Josh. He wants him to pitch like he did in high school. Russ holds the pitching record at his alma mater. See that right over the plate? It's way. The neurological disease, Parkinson's, almost stopped Russ from fulfilling his dream. Dr. Shumei Wong at Penn State Hershey Medical Center says there's no known cause for the disease, but what is known is Parkinson's attacks brain cells called dopamine. What it did to your brain is, I think it's caused uh, a group of cells called dopamine cells degenerate or die. That cause motor disability, affect your function of life. Initially, Russ took medication to control the tremors, and it worked. What it does is go to your brain, become dopamine, which is the replace those chemicals we lost due to disease. It dramatically improved person's quality of life. Russ's life improved, but eventually the medicine didn't work as well as the disease progressed. He started with his with his hands mostly. First one hand, then next thing you knew, the second hand started shaking, and then his legs started shaking. It was pretty bad. My wife can contest to that. Uh, it was tiring. It was really bad. I mean, we, we couldn't sit together on the, on the sofa next to each other. That, you know, if he would try to put his arm across my shoulders or something, he would shake. I could only tolerate for maybe three to five minutes. Currently, we don't have any um, medicine to stop the progression of disease. So it's over time gradually getting worse and worse. To the end, actually, can, people have really trouble to walk in and they can have a, be wheelchair bound. It was hard to see him deteriorate. One month he'd be, you know, pretty good, and then the next month he'd be falling or having balance problems. Russ knew he had only one choice to get better, deep brain stimulation. He uh, was getting to a point in his disease where more basic things, interacting with his family, being able to uh, play with his grandchildren, the things that, that really made a difference in his life were becoming things that he couldn't do on, on a day-to-day -day basis. Dr. Jim McInerney implanted the device two years ago. Russ and Mary watched the transformation. Russ's body relaxed for the first time in years. It was amazing and I'm sitting there my eyes were wide open and tears were running down my face and, and they were on Russ's too because he realized what was happening. Russ got his life back. Well, it made it made a difference in my life, actually. I go out and play ball, I can play golf. Makes me feel great. We praise God every day for that operation. Now, Russ's dream is coming true. Perfect, perfect. It's very heartwarming because I know that his dream was to uh, teach his, his grandsons how to pitch. Pop Pop and Grandson both have their eyes on the future. You ready to go big time now? Uh -huh. A big contract for the city. And Dr. McInerney stresses deep brain stimulation is a treatment. It does not cure Parkinson's. Now, with all these calls coming in, we do have someone here to help answer some of our questions. It's Dr. Shumei Wong, a neurologist at the Penn State Hershey Neuroscience Institute. Thanks for joining us tonight. Pleasure. Here's our first viewer question. My aunt was diagnosed with Parkinson's four years ago. Medication helped her at first, but now her hand shakes whenever she sits down. Is she a good candidate for deep brain stimulation? 
In general, if a patient has responded too well to the medication in the past, they often a good candidate for deep brain stimulation. However, it's important to uh, have their medication evaluated by a physician who are experienced treating Parkinson's disease before it declares not working. Okay, great. Thanks so much. And Dr. Wong, we will check back with you in just a little bit. Right now, we'll send it back to you in the studio, Val. All right. Thank you, Deborah. Doctor, how do you determine if a patient is a good candidate for deep brain stimulation? Well, first of all, almost anybody with tremors would be a reasonable candidate. Mm -hmm. I think for the patient with Parkinson's disease, what they often see when they get to the point where they're good candidates for surgery is that they respond to their medications, but not as well as they had previously. They're requiring more, sometimes more in number mm -hmm. or more frequency, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and they're re requiring uh, you know, it back to back and because it's cycling on and off, so that they're having their symptoms more frequently. When, when that happens, a lot of times what we can do is smooth that out, get them that best level of function, make it all the time, and get them down on their medications. So how long does the surgery take about? The surgery itself takes about four hours to actually implant the lead. And what about the recovery? Recovery is actually pretty quick. Um, it's not a lot of surgery from the patient's perspective, mm -hmm. as I was saying before. And so actually most people will spend the night with us so we can keep a close eye on them, but virtually everybody goes home the next day. Okay, what, if any, are the side effects? Well, there's side effects to everything we do. And in surgery, the thing you always worry about the most is bleeding and infection. Mm -hmm. And that's certainly the same here. And we do a lot of things to make sure that that risk is very minimal. And it is. Bleeding is less than 1 in 200. Um, other things we worry about neurologically are things like uh, speech problems, sometimes double vision, um, or odd pins and needles type sensations. But we actually screen for those things in the operating room. And if we find them, we can fix that while we're there. Right, so. you're there. right while yep. you're there. That's wonderful. Right. Thank you, doctor. For Tom Schaefer, running his cattle farming business became a challenge once his Parkinson's disease progressed. Hunting was almost impossible. We'll have his story right after this.